Hello, my name's Natalie Phillips. I'm clinical manager at Haddenham Healthcare and an independent lymphedema nurse specialist. And I'm here today with my colleague, Sue Lawrence. And I'm a clinical nurse specialist. I run a lymphedema service in, in Buckinghamshire and we deal with cancer and non-cancer patients. And we're here today to just have a conversation around what it means for patients to self-manage their lower limb conditions with particular reference to chronic edema and the experiences that we've had as clinicians in trying to promote self-management with patients. I think um, the thing to sort of touch upon first is, is that why is it important to get patients and encourage patients to self-manage? I think because we have patients who have a lifelong condition, they have to we have to work with them to be able to get them to um, take some responsibility for their condition um, because it's it's for life and we have to find the best way with your patients of managing this ongoing condition to the best of our ability and on um, their ability um, and we have to kind of meet each other halfway with what we can advise and um, in, empower patients with the right equipment but we also need patients to be able to take on board what we're offering so that they can actually manage the condition alongside us mm. and become more independent I think. Do you think it, it do you think at times it, it goes we have to sort of take a few steps back when patients come into us at first because that that whole ideal of self-management hasn't happened for them or and and they feel that they have in some instances been let down i think so i think we the patients that we get coming into specialist clinics have probably been through a system where they've been managed but maybe not to the best um to the best effect um by clinicians with the best will in the world who haven't got the experience that that we've got as specialists um, and have managed patients to the best of their ability, but they've struggled or they've not had the right tools or the right experience mm -hmm. to be able to manage it properly. Mm -hmm. And then I think we get patients on the back of that coming in almost disillusioned with the fact, well, I've tried this before, I've had compression before, I've had garments before, they don't work, I'm not going down that road again, um, because they've had something that hasn't been right for them, probably through no fault of their own or their, their clinicians, um, but just not not having the education and the awareness sometimes that specialists have to know what would work particularly well in a certain situation um, as opposed to a garment that they tried before that hasn't and it's, it's put them off mm. um, and they come in as yeah like you say a little bit disillusioned and a little bit oh, it's not worth it it hasn't worked what are you going to do that's different I've been down this road before mm -hmm. and um, you know and quite often now yeah and quite often those those patients from, from a clinical perspective are often labelled as non-concordant. And, and I think this is something that we need to challenge in clinical practice, because I th certainly from my experience, when, when I've had a referral come in and, and patients non-concordant with compression, you then spend some time with that patient and really backtrack and get to know like you say, what mm. they've had previously, um, what's important to them, and, and backtrack to how the, the simplest of questions is how does your lower limb condition affect you? Mm. What would you like to achieve? Um, before even discussing any treatments mm. or, or best practice in, in management mm. of their condition, mm. um, I think that's really important because I think, again, it's, it's that I think from a patient perspective, patients do have some negative experiences that they then take forward to when they go and see another healthcare professional. Mm. So that it's almost that one bad experience it is, is the, the patient is not sure that they're actually going to get on with you. Yes, yeah, I think it's it's really important to build up that relationship in the first place, isn't it? To get that understanding of what's been, what's happened before, what what their experiences have been, and why they've had those experiences. Mm -hmm. And I think, as specialists, we probably have a little bit more time yes. to be able to sit down and go through all of that 
with somebody um, to find out what what their expectations are, um, what they want to what they want to achieve, what their goals are. Um, but being realistic and us, I think, being realistic with them mm -hmm. as to what is actually manageable um, and that it's not that we have a magic garment or wrap or anything that's just going to make it go back completely to normal mm -hmm. and they won't ever have to do anything. There isn't a magic tablet or anything else that we can give people. It's an ongoing chronic situation that has to be managed, mm -hmm. but we can help them along that journey to, to manage that the best that we possibly can, working with them. Mm -hmm. um, and I think it's the working with them and um, the two-way partnership yes. that is, is the key to it. Um, mm -hmm. um, but I, it needs a lot of time in those initial few sessions to get that relationship on board and to, to fathom out with your patient what what the problems are, what their expectations are, and what they want at the end of the day. Yeah. Being realistic, and I think it's the realism that's important. Mm -hmm. um, and we, we get patients that have been referred to say, oh, go to the lymphedema clinic, they'll sort you out, they've got you know wonderful garments, or they've got hands-on therapies, and they'll just make it all go away, mm -hmm. and sort it out. And they come <laughs> with us, oh, well, you can sort it all out for me. And we have to say, well, actually, you know, there isn't a single modality of treatment that will make it all go away we mm -hmm. have to work to the best that we can to get your situation the best that we can get it to but we can't promise that we will make it go back to normal um Absolutely. and it means that we've got to work together <clears throat> to keep to get to that point um, and then keep at that point for you but um, yeah. i think that's really important as well isn't it because <clears throat> it's that it's almost setting the scene from the beginning and i've started doing this quite a lot with some of the patients that come to see me is that i am not here to fix you <clears throat> i will help to give you the education and the tools that you need to be able to manage this condition yourself mm. because actually the last thing you need is for me to be in interrupting your life every few days or however often to have to perform treatments the best thing you can do is is treat yourself to prevent have that burden of having to be with a clinician and and the the patients that I've seen have really taken that on board, and it, I think it again it, it goes back to that. You're right, totally. We have the time, um, and being able to give a patient that time to just be able to take the lid off that can of worms of mm. what they're feeling. Mm. Um, quite often, again, where I've done an initial assessment and we have our ninety minutes. Mm there's been occasions where I've not even done a physical assessment because we uh, just ended up talking. Mm. And that, I think we can't underestimate the power of that mm. um, for, for patients being able to then accept their condition to be able to move forward to manage it and mm. take control of it. Mm. Mm. And again, it, it's going back to a, a conversation I had the other day about a patient taking control rather than letting their their lymphedema control them mm -hmm. um and and they really love the an analogy of having a toolbox yes absolutely yeah. and and i think it's something that as clinicians as uh, where depending on where we work we shouldn't be restricting the tools that those patients can have mm -hmm. to manage their yeah. condition and i think we're really lucky now is that we do have a lot more tools in our toolboxes that we can use with patients so we're not restricted to you know, years ago a pair of american tan baloney garments yeah. with or a thigh garment with no grip top that were totally impractical so we do now have a massive range of garments of textures of colors of choices styles um, and as well as garments we have wraps and we have nighttime garments yes. we have a whole load of um, different compression devices, I suppose, within our scope of practice mm -hmm. that we can use and give patients choice and flexibility. And I think if you can be flexible with what you can offer and you can offer choice, um, then patients are much more likely to say, oh, I can use this for this part of the day, or I can use this for this yes. part of the day if I'm going out or wear my garment, if I'm at home or working from home. And now a lot more people are working from home. Yeah. Um, that you know the wraps come into play, or or um, 
foam garments underneath wraps and various other com combinations of things that we've now got mm -hmm. um, that can be used in conjunction with with just a normal garment depending on what the patients are doing so they can manage much more independently not be reliant on attending clinics quite so often mm -hmm. um, and take a lot more responsibility and control mixing and matching what they need to use over certain parts of the day or the week or um, depending on what activity they're doing mm. they, can, they can be flexible which i think gives much more scope to somebody accepting that i don't have to just wear this yes i can wear this for this and if i'm going out i can take that bulky wrap off and i can put on a more cosmetically acceptable garment yes. and then i can swap back at night time if it's playing up a bit i'll put the wrap back on so i think we can be much more flexible with what we're offering patients mm. and i think that goes back to being able to get again before we even go down the compression route is that education that mm. that, that educating our patients educating ourselves mm. to to i mean we all know the the changes in theories that underpin why we use compression and even down to um the association between the lymphatics and the venous system has has changed how we everybody views things so I, I think passing that on to the patients as well to say right this is this we're not just saying you've got to wear a compression garment just because we're telling you to this is what underpins it and and i think certainly with a lot of the access to all the platforms that our patients have now in terms of social media in terms of um, legs matter the, and the coalition there it, mm. it's patients have have a fantastic access to that information mm. to that then allows them to, to become experts in their care yeah. yeah and i think it's pointing them in the right direction as well isn't it because a lot of generalists or best people in the world the district nurses and practice nurses don't necessarily have access or awareness of a lot of these social platforms no. um, whereas when you know, specialists we work day in day out with this sort of problem and we're aware of all the options there are all the all the different sites that can be obtained such so as health help videos a whole load of patient information leaflets sites for support all those sorts of things that we can access very easily mm -hmm. I think if we can point patients in that direction and they can get that support and that extra backup Mm -hmm. uh, and again, and with along with that comes the realization that they're not the only one, and there are lots of other people out there with similar conditions. Yes, and there are support groups out there, and there are help groups and all sorts of things that they can access and tap into if they want to, um, and to get more information. I think. Mm -hmm. and I think that the the patients that we we get when we first meet them, I think a lot of them haven't had that initial time and that sort of explanation beforehand. Um, as to why something's happening, as you were talking about the, the correlation between lymphatics and, and the venous system, I don't, that again is a more specialist um, knowledge. Mm -hmm. um, and I think if once patients, if you can explain it in clear, simple terms, once patients understand how the body works, what's gone a little bit wrong with it, why it's not working as it should be, and why they're getting the swelling in the first place, and then why why what we're suggesting works mm -hmm. and will help and if they understand that we're not just dictating and saying do this do this do this if they understand why we're asking them to mobilize because of the calf muscle pumps and how that works and why it's important um, and why elevating is important and why wearing the compression how it works and why we choose this garment over this garment yes. because of your leg your limb shape mm -hmm. will be much better in this um for argument's sake, a circular knit fabric as opposed to a flat knit fabric or vice versa. Yes. Or wear a wrap's more appropriate than a, than a stretchy garment, a circular knit garment. Um, and if they can understand why, then I think self-management is much much easier for them to start to take on board yes. and not be so reliant on, on therapists. Yeah, absolutely. And if it, again, it's that it goes back to allowing a patient to titrate their compression mm -hmm. as they would titrate their some of medications so and i think it's that as therapists and as generalists whoever's involved in lower limb management we need to ensure that we're not just thinking about the need to step up and step down mm -hmm. compression that we're actually teaching the patients those that that 
want to take control, that are happy to take control, we, we give them those tools. And it, again, I go back to the fact that hey, we're all very good at restricting patients' garments to a patient will be prescribed two sets of hosiery or every six months. Well, would we wear the same pair of socks just over six months? Mm the same two pairs of socks. Mm. And, and I think it's important that we don't assume that a patient shouldn't be given the choice to be able to go off and purchase extra garments if they need to, if they choose to. And again, have that knowledge of the platforms that are available for them to do that. Um, regardless of which company's hosiery they wear, um, I think it, it's really, really important. And again, like you say, in terms of, and I've got it myself, where some of my patients at self manage will know when their edema or is is feeling a little bit worse, and they will switch their compression around. So yeah. they will increase their level of compression. Um, and as long as they are well educated, there shouldn't be a problem with that. And. Um, Again, it's one of one of my patients. He's really excited to be able to go on holiday when we're able to go <laughs> anywhere, um, and know that he's got his different pr compression, mm. as well as things like kinesiology taping mm. that he's been taught to do himself, so that he can go on holiday and he knows that he can do his self lymphatic drainage, his skin care. He's got. Um, an old compression garment that he's going to swim in. Mm -hmm. He's got kinesio tape so that actually he can choose at a time when he's in, in the evening and going out where he can tape his limb rather than wear his garments and then put his garments back on when he gets back into mm -hmm. his room. So it's given him all of that. And he he it's been amazing to watch his confidence and his self-esteem mm -hmm. and him feel... Uh, yeah, I've got this. Mm. I've yeah. got this. Yeah, it's lovely to have so much, so much choice, and a lot of us do have the luxury of having a lot of choice of different garments and some prescription range and some that we can buy from clinic budgets. I think it's a shame in a way that some clinics are not able to have a budget that allows them to do that, apart from providing prescription range garments. And some mm -hmm. clinics I know are, are quite restricted in what they can get hold of. Um, and I think, but now we've we've got more garments that are available on the prescription range through the GPs, that providing we get the GPs on board and explain, I think, why we need something in addition to a normal standard garment, um, that if we can, we can educate them as well, so that their patients can self-manage in the long run, it will be much more beneficial for, all around for patients and for clinics and for the GPs mm -hmm. to keep that patient stable, um, that if we get them to agree to maybe ordering you know, a wrap on top of garments on the prescription system, then patients can access more, more garments without having to <coughs> buy them independently. Yes. Um, which is now obviously much more available through certain platforms with lots of different companies, mm -hmm. but patients can actually buy their own extra garments mm -hmm. or wraps or or other devices. Mm -hmm. um, I think it's also a, the important for us as clinicians and and whether that's us as specialists or generalists that that we all take time to get to know the products and it is a minefield mm -hmm. because there's so many different things out there. But I think we risk if we don't get to know different companies falling into the trap of using limiting products again that patients aren't able to you, you you limit them and they don't get on with them and then that's again it's that oh compression doesn't work I, I can't get on with compression so I think we have a responsibility to, to be able to let our patients know what's out there um, and it's that thing of as well it's, it's if you don't know what's available from every different every company you can't then get your patient into something such that they may find easier to get on and off. 
Um, and, and again, it's that some companies, different companies will have different fastening options for garments. So, and again, different styles and types of flat knits and circular knits that, that everybody's, every company's differ slightly and patients will prefer some over the others. Mm-hmm. Um, so it is a case of, I think as clinicians, we have to not, sit there and think oh just compression is compression it's either flat knit or circular knit or wraps Mm -hmm. it's that each individual product from each individual company has slight differences and i think as specialists we're really lucky because we we have access to that information a lot easier probably than the generalists do Mm. and i think it's Certainly locally, we're working with our community nurses to upskill as far as sort of management of chronic leg leg ulcers and and chronic edemas, just so that we've got a a broader base for the for the simple, non complicated patients. Mm -hmm. Um, But it's also allowing them, or so they know that they've got contact points for their problems. And if we if they're using a certain range of um, compression or wraps, and they're not working or then they contact one of the specialists, whether it's myself or the tissue liability team, that can advise on other companies or other items that yeah. they can they can they can be more flexible with as well. Yeah. If they haven't got that knowledge themselves, which they're, they're unlikely to because they don't deal with compression day in, day out like the specialists do. Yeah. Um, that they've got a, a point of contact so that they can say, we've tried this, we've tried this, we've done this type of bandaging, it's not really working can we either refer them to you or can we ask for advice mm-hmm. about where we would go next mm-hmm. with a, a different type of fabric or a different compression mm-hmm. or a different garment or whatever so that they can tap back into the expertise that's mm-hmm. around. I agree, I agree. That's really important. I think one of the other important factors that that is something that I think is a big barrier to self-management is that sometimes patients choose to not tell us or not tell their clinicians that they're they're struggling with their compression. Um, and we've all had patients where they come back into clinic and their legs are massive and the compression hosiery sat in a drawer <coughs> because they couldn't get it on. Um, so again, I think it's, it's really, really important that patients don't feel like they're a burden when they need to contact us, especially during COVID times, um, I think many patients have done fantastically well with their self-management and have taken a lot more on board than they probably have done previously. I certainly know that we've both had experiences of patients measuring themselves via video call and us, us overseeing that to be able to order some of their compression hosiery. Um, But again, I think they feel really empowered with that. Um, So, but I do think it's it's that it is very important that they they contact us and let us know that they're struggling, that so that we can then look for an alternative or be able to make sure that they've got the correct device for getting it on and off, or that maybe it's a switch of fabric to something a little bit different, so that it's got. A Velcro strap or or another fastening option, um, but I do. I think sometimes patients worry about making that contact that they're almost going to get told off. <laughs> yes, I mean, you occasionally get there. You're not going to like me because I haven't done this, this, and this. And then if you if you contacted me before, you know, we'd much rather you contacted us and told us it was a problem than you left it for six yeah. months and then came back with a problem that was going to take longer to fix again. So yeah. I think it's just trying to get the message over, isn't it, that you know, we need you, yes, we're trying to get you independent, but if there's a problem and you're not managing, then we'd much, much rather that you contacted us and we sorted it out quickly than yes. you felt that you couldn't contact us or we didn't want to bother us and we're so busy and we don't want to don't want to be a, a problem and a trouble to you but uh, yeah, most clinicians would much rather people <clears throat> who were struggling contact you sooner rather than later so yes. we can fix things and, and get you back on a, a self-management track again that you can then go off and be independent but with the backup that's there if you need it if, if things aren't going quite as planned mm-hmm. then at least you've got that so 
the, the contacts and the backup to shout for help if you need to. Yes. And trying to get that message across that they're, that's what we want them to do and not just go away and we're not going to see them Absolutely. again and not have the, the backup there. I think it's really important I that, think it's, that that's there. I think it's important that, that everybody knows that it's there's always going to be a support there. Yeah, absolutely. But because it's a lifelong absolutely. chronic condition, yeah. whether it's lymphedema or a venous problem, and that that there there is something out there that is is available to help you manage that condition, yeah. and there is a plan of care that is suitable for you. Yes, absolutely. We're we're not about to dictate uh, one thing that fits all. No, I think it's very much an individualised package of care, isn't it? Yeah. So that, you know, it, everybody is very individual. What they need to control their condition is very individual. What they can manage from a dexterity point of view or mobility point of view is very, very different to each other. So somebody can manage a, a garment quite easily and somebody with a back problem can't, but they could manage a wrap quite easily. So mm. I think there is there has to be that flexibility to be able to tailor make a package of care for for each individual that they can then go away and, and self-manage mm. um, be more independent i think mm. that's great that's great well it's been lovely having a chat <laughs> um and we hope that you've just found our chatting quite useful um and yes enjoy the legs matter campaign and let's keep standing up for legs and doing the best we can <laughs>